Hello everyone and welcome to the workshop. I recently posted three videos on crystal radios and winding coils for your crystal radios. These videos got such good response that I'm going to do another one today. Today we're going to examine the most simple, basic, fundamental crystal radio you can possibly build. This radio is often called the Boy Scout radios because in days of old it used to show up in Boy Scout manuals under the heading Projects You Can Build to Earn Merit Badges. Merit Badges. And the Merit Badge was probably one in electricity. This is a very simple radio. If you don't count hardware and wiring, it has only four parts. There's a tuning coil. There's a movable wiper to tune the tuning coil. There's a germanium diode detector and either a pair of headphones or a little crystal earplug you put in your ear. Now I have a warning for you. If you intend to build this particular radio, beware. You may be very disappointed in its performance because tuning is very, very broad. You will probably only hear the most powerful local radio station and maybe one or two others in the background that are barely audible. This is what is meant by very broad tuning. Well, there is a cure for this problem that we'll go into later. But first, let's take a close look at the so-called Boy Scout radio. Here is an example of the Boy Scout crystal radio. It's the most fundamental, basic, and simplest radio you could possibly build. As I said before, it only has four parts. There is the coil. There's a wiper to contact the coil. What this does is lengthen or shorten the coil electrically to receive different stations. Here is a little germanium diode detector, and here is the crystal earphone. Now, if you plan to build a circuit like this, beware. You will probably be very disappointed in its performance. Selectivity is terrible. However, it's a very simple circuit and easy to build. I'm going to show you a diagram, a circuit diagram, in a minute so you can see how simple the radio really is. Then we're going to move on to a more sophisticated, a little more complicated crystal radio that performs much, much better. But first, here's a diagram of this radio. Well, that sure is a very simple radio. But the basic trouble with the Boy Scout crystal radio is that it does not use what is called an antenna coupler. And just like the name implies, the antenna coupler couples your antenna to your receiver. And very interestingly, it does so magnetically, not physically. Here is an example of a typical antenna coupler. All antenna couplers employ two coils wound on the same form. There's a larger coil, the main tuning coil, and a smaller coil, the antenna coil. In this case, my large coil is 90 turns of number 22 magnet wire, and my small antenna coil is 25 turns of number 24 magnet wire, wound on the same form, spaced about an eighth of an inch apart. There is no direct connection between the tuning coil and the antenna coil. The antenna coil is connected between your antenna and your ground. It is part of the antenna ground system. When radio waves strike your antenna, they set up a minute alternating current in the antenna ground system, which includes the small coil. The small coil sets up a minute magnetic field that cuts across some of the turns of the large tuning coil. This induces a very small alternating current in the tuning coil. Now this way your radio gets the radio signal but does not have to contend with all the resistance present in your antenna ground system. And what this does is make tuning much, much sharper. Well, that's the story on the antenna coupler. Now let's look at a somewhat more sophisticated crystal radio that utilizes this antenna coupler. And here's a somewhat more sophisticated crystal radio. It has a few more parts, but it will surely outperform any Boy Scout radio. Right away you see it has the antenna coupler, the large coil for tuning, and the small coil is called an antenna coil. It's connected directly between the antenna and ground. There's no direct electrical connection between the two coils, and they're spaced about an eighth of an inch apart. 
Now, although this, what we call a wiper, does a fairly good job of tuning, you can get even more control over tuning if you add a tuning capacitor, a variable tuning capacitor. Yes, these are still available brand new at Antique Electronics. That is tubesandmore.com online. Tubesandmore.com. Also, you will notice that my coil is not resting directly on the breadboard. It's about an inch above the breadboard. And that is because it's not a good idea for any radio frequency coil to be touching anything. So I designed these little offset brackets to hold the coil about an inch above the breadboard. I mount the brackets to the coil, and then I mount the coil to the board, and it does an excellent job. And as a final finishing touch, I have added a standard phone jack back here. This makes connection of my headphones fast and easy. Well, let's take a look at the schematic for this particular radio. Now there's one point that bears repeating. The purpose of the antenna coupler is to eliminate all the resistance present in your antenna ground system. And by eliminating this resistance, you increase selectivity of your tuning. Tuning is much sharper. A couple videos ago, I recommended a book for beginners in the crystal radio building hobby. It is Radios That Work For Free by K.E. Edwards. And I mistakenly told you the book is out of print and no longer available. But I was corrected by one of my viewers who told me he just purchased one from Amazon and that more are available. Well, this is very good news. I'm glad to hear it. There's one component of your radio that I have not touched upon today, and that is the antenna. The antenna is just as important a part of your radio as the tuning coil, the wiper blade, the earphone, or any other part. It all starts with the antenna. Many people, I'm afraid, build a crystal radio receiver and are really disappointed with what they get out of it because their antenna is not adequate. Remember, a minimal antenna would be 50 feet of wire strung up between two poles. And a much better antenna would be 100 feet of wire strung on two poles as high as possible. Remember, everything starts with the antenna. Well, folks, that's it for now. I'm signing off until next time, and I thank you for watching.